So as I did this, I decided that, well, I mean, I could probably recover my funds using Electrum, but what if my kids needed to recover it or my wife who none of them have ever sent a Bitcoin transaction, right? <clears throat> and then I was thinking about like how I listened to the uh, rabbit hole recap this week and Blue Wallet had an update. So I decided to try recovering with that. Um, here, and I decided that this is the easy way to go for that. So what I want to do is uh, <clears throat> go to, in this case, because it's an Android, I'm going to go to Google Play. But you could go to the App Store too. And I believe that they, this uh, wallet actually has uh, a desktop app for Macs. <clears throat> but I'm going to go to Play, right? And I'm already on the blue wallet here. I'm sure you know how to like download apps, right? So I go ahead and click install. <clears throat> uh, now, until about a week ago, whenever you scan the PDF file that I showed you earlier, well, unfortunately, it, w it was not compatible with Spectre Desktop. But they just fixed that in the update, which makes it very handy for recovering your wallet. As you can see, here's the paper wallet that I used. Um, now this is downloaded, I'm going to open it. <clears throat> and this is just an old phone. Uh, I mean, you can see the cracks and everything, right? So it's open. Now I'm going to click Add Wallet. And I suppose if you wanted to maintain your air gap, could even just use this as a signing key and it works similar to a Kobo Vault, really. I mean, a Kobo Vault is just an Android based machine anyway. So you could go on airplane mode. So I just did that. Um, but the advantage of this is, you know, maybe you don't know how to use a Kobo Vault or maybe you don't know how to use a cold card. You could just add two out of the three keys in here uh, and then, I don't know, send it to a single signature wallet if you're not comfortable with this. Uh, but for right now, I'll just go ahead and add a wallet. Okay. Then I'm going to click Vault. And we're not going to create. We're going to Import Wallet. Then I click Scan Import File. Allow Blue Wallet to take pictures, yada, yada, yada. Of course, I'm going to allow that. Okay. And I drop my phone. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go ahead and remember that Spectre backup, backup file. Just going to scan that. And just like that, the wallet is being imported. Now, because this is an old phone, it, it will take uh, a while. Um, so it's importing. Alert, your wallet has been successfully imported. Click OK. Now, it says I don't have any Bitcoin in there. Uh, and that's because it's not actually connected to the internet. If you remember, I had about, uh, I think, 25,000 Satoshis in there, right? Um, but I just want to show you that I can do this without even connecting it to the internet anyway. All right, now to, the add, to add this emergency paper wallet, I'm going to click Manage Keys. I don't know if you can see that. I'll do it again. See Manage Keys there, Manage Keys. And then I want to compare um, these last, I guess, five characters to the ones on my, or to the, to the XPubs on my PDF, all right? And so I know that uh, the paper wallet is BVOPS, right? And I can verify that by looking at the last five on my, uh, I can see that demo paper wallet, uh, it's BVOPS. So I verify that. So I know that that vault one key is the one I wanna use here, right? So. Uh, I'm going to click, I have a seed for this key. Touch that. And then I just type this in here. And I'm going to try to do this one-handed. 
hopefully you can see that. I type much better on my uh, computer than I do on this thing. Especially with one hand. <laughs> I really like this wallet. I mean, it's got some pretty cool features. Uh, it even does lightning and whatnot. Not hate, it's gate. Uh, okay, I'm gonna slow down and double check here. I'm trying to chew gum and uh, Type in the seed at the same time, apparently. It's not my forte. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause this real quick and then... Okay, so rather than watching paint dry, I just uh, pause the video and enter the keys uh, or the seed words. So you see these uh, keywords are in there now. I'm going to go ahead and touch import. And there we go. Now it's... It says, uh, I have this, well, it says, forget the seed and use XPUB. So I could do that if I wanted to, right? Um, but no, I'm going to save that. Now I'm on the wallet again. Going to send. Scan an address here. And I'm just going to scan this dummy address here. Put in a note, we'll just leave it like that. Um, send it one sat a byte, but really it's it needs to be more than that, right? So make because the fees are pretty high today. Let's say, uh, I don't know, I don't know if uh, one sat a byte's ever gonna make it again. Well, we'll just leave it though for now. Uh, here we go. We'll go meet and well, they're all one sat a byte. Um, this is because it's not connected to the internet, I, I suppose. Oh. All right, so... I guess that means that it does need to be connected to the internet. I'm just going to go ahead and connect it then. Uh, maybe I should have left it on connected to the internet first. Okay, so I went ahead and installed it with the internet on. Let's say I send it now. Go ahead and get that address here. Okay.
All right, and uh, I think I missed it, but I chose 11. Well, here, the fee, um, let's say I do 11 sats per byte. We can make that lower or more if we want. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and stick with 11 sats per byte for now. Scan it again. Oh, bear with me here. Okay, uh, apparently if you don't actually have a Bitcoin address, it won't scan anything. I had the wrong QR code there. All right. Uh, you can double check the fees. Looks like we're good there. Go ahead and click next. Oh, so we want to just send all of this. Go back to one set of byte. Oh, 